This video is meant to give you some background information about RC circuits. First off, the two types of RC circuits. There's a charging circuit and a discharging circuit. This is the charging RC circuit. It consists of a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. All three of these elements are in series with each other. The current, because they're in series, the current through the resistor is the same as the current through the capacitor. Another characteristic of this circuit is when charging the potential difference across the resistor plus the potential difference across the capacitor equal the EMF of the battery. This is the other type of circuit. It's a discharging circuit. This is used for taking charges energy off the capacitor and heating up the resistor. So when discharging, all components are in parallel and they have a series characteristic as well. The potential difference across the capacitor is the same as the potential difference across the resistor. That's the parallel part. But if you look at it, they're also in series with each other. So the circuit's unique compared to other circuits because it also has the same current on the capacitor as it does through the resistor. Now let's look at what happens. When charging up a capacitor, it doesn't just charge. It takes time for the charges to go to the capacitor plates. So remember, a capacitor is just two plates connected to a wire. I like to make the analogy of two rooms, and then I've got people as the charges going into the rooms. So here's some uh, lines that we're going to approach. First off, if we think about people going into the rooms, <coughs> and the people are the charges, when you first enter and everyone wants to go into a room, when you first go to the room, it's real easy. So the room feels very fast. And then after a while, the people start pushing against each other, and it's harder and harder to put a person into the room. And that's why the charging curve has the shape. Instead of people, it's charges all repelling each other. Once the plates begin to get full, it's really hard to put another charge on the plate, so it slows down. Because the rate slows down, we can see what happens to the current as well. So, going back to my room analogy, at first all the people can flow into the room, but as the room gets full, it's harder and harder to stick more people in there, so you can see that the current, which is the rate of change of the, of the amount of charge put on there, also slows down. Now, let's look at the battery. <coughs> I'm sorry, let's look at the um, potential difference across the capacitor. So, capacitance is a ratio of charge to voltage. That means that the voltage is a ratio of charge to capacitance. Since the capacitance is physically defined by the capacitor itself, I know that voltage is proportional to the charge. So whatever happens to the charge also happens to the voltage across the capacitor as well. So it'll take the same shape for the curve. Now the resistor is a little bit different because I know of this circuit that's in series, so I know that the potential difference from the capacitor plus the potential difference for the resistor has to add up to the EMF for the battery. So it's going to be an, like a mirror image of what's going on with the capacitor. So it's going to look more like the current than anything else, the current's graph. All right, let's take a quick look at discharging. So discharging, we're looking at the same values. The nice thing about discharging is the curve is all kind of the same. At first, a lot of charge flows off, and there's less charge to flow off, so the curve decreases. For the current, at first, a lot of cho charge flows off the capacitor, and then eventually there's not much charge left, so it decreases. As the charge leaves, so does the potential difference. And our resistor is going to do the same thing as the capacitor because we know that the capacitor's voltage is the same as the resistor's voltage. So our graphs are the same. Now let's look at the equation that we have to describe this model. From looking at the charge and when it's charging, I know that the charge is a function of time, that's my Q on the left, is equal to my final amount of charge that's on the capacitor times parentheses 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. So the E is kind of neat. Um, sometimes they've called it Euler's number, not constant, but Euler's number. And that's the 27182518251895. Uh, Anyways, um, that's the value E on the calculator that you can use. So for our um, circuit, let's look a little bit closer at what's going on here. First off, we have a variable we call the time constant, and that's a Greek letter tau. You can see it looks kind of like a capital T, but a little more graceful there. And that's the resistor times the capacitor. So when I multiply those two values together, they become the time constant. Now let's look at the units for the time constant. So we'll start with Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. That means R is equal to I. That means R is equal to V over I. So I is equal to Q over T, by definition. Therefore, if I take I and replace it with Q over T, R is equal to VT over Q. 
capacitance is defined as ratio of charge to voltage, so R times C is actually VTQ over QV. In other words, all the variables divide out except time. So RC is actually measured in time, in seconds. Now we also have a kind of a shortcut that we always use, and then we call RC the time constant. And so we'll measure the RC value in terms of how many time constants instead of how many seconds. So we have two ways of measuring it. First, how many seconds, and secondly, how many time constants pass. Now let's look at the equation for the uh, current that's when the uh, capacitor is charging. So the current as a function of time is equal to the, to the initial current times e to the minus t over rc. And then for the battery, it's the same formula as we set up for the charge. And for the voltage across the resistor, it's just like the current. When discharging, the nice thing is all these have the same pattern. So the charge as a function of time is equal to the uh, starting charge amount of charge times E to the negative T over RC. And that same pattern continues for the current, for the voltage, for the capacitor, and the voltage across the resistor. Alright, so Q is equal to Q naught times E to the negative T over RC. Remember our time constant is equal to RC, so we can look at this in terms of time constants. So Q is equal to Q naught times E to the negative RC over RC. That's 1 times the time constant. So I've replaced the time set up with seconds with the value for RC. So RC over RC is just 1. So Q is equal to Q naught E to the negative 1. That means Q is equal to, well, E to the negative 1 is 0.37. So Q is equal to 0.37 times Q naught. That means the ratio of the charges is equal to 37%. Okay, so what does this mean? We'll look on the graph. At one time constant's value, tau, I know that at one time constant, I'm down to 37% remaining of my charge. So that's why we measure it in time constants, because it's universal no matter what you have. If you have a time constant, you know that any time you're down one time constant, you're down to 37% of the initial uh, remaining charge. Here's some solutions to help when doing some math with this. First off, if you're ever given something that says, uh, 50% remains or 40% remains, it starts off with a percentage as a decimal is equal e to the negative t over rc. Even though the equation is q minus q naught, I'm still starting off as the percentage is equal to e to the negative t over rc. So that's how it's going to set up when we do our, our percentage. Now in terms of math, in order to get the, the variables t and uh, rc, you have to, have to take the natural log of both sides. So you would set up as the natural log of the percentage in decimal form and that would then be equal to the negative t over rc. And your natural log when you're doing it, it's a percent, so it's going to be less than 1, which is going to give you a negative value, so the negative values will uh, divide out of the equation. Alright, let's take a look at what's going on when it charges. So when it charges, I have q is equal to q naught times the parentheses 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. Time constant, remember that's rc, it's another way of measuring time in terms of not seconds, but number of time constants. Q is equal to Q naught times parentheses 1 minus E to the negative RC over RC. So now we're looking at one time constant again. You're thinking it's going to be 37% just like before, except the curve is different. And so this time it's actually 1 minus 37%. Or after one time constant, 63% of the charges are filled up the capacitor at this point. So it looks like this on the graph. You can see after one time constant, instead of 37, I'm at 63%. All right, let's take one more look at these time constants. So here I've got a graph of the potential difference across the capacitor. And along the bottom, that's going to be time, but not in seconds. Instead, what I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it in time constants. So one time constant, two time constants, three, four, five time constants. And here's my equation. The um, potential difference across the capacitor is equal to the battery's voltage times parentheses 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. In this case, after one time constant, so I put in 1 times rc, over RC and I get 63%. After two time constants I get 87%, three time constants 95%, four time constants 99 and after five time constants we consider the capacitor to be completely charged. Although really it's, it's got to go out an infinite amount of time to get to the maximum voltage but we'll consider it fully charged after five time constants. Discharging. So when discharging I'll do the same thing. I want to measure the time, not in seconds, but in time constants. So our equation is a little bit different. The voltage across the capacitor is now equal to the initial voltage on the capacitor that's stored in it. 
Uh, you can get that from the ratio of charge, uh, sorry, yeah, charge to capacitance. And that's equal to uh, the initial voltage times E to the negative T over RC. After one time constant this time, I'm at 37% left, our charge is left. After two time constants, 14%. After three time constants, five percent, and after four time constants, about two percent. It's uh, some a little less than two percent. And then after five time constants, we consider the capacitor to be completely discharged. So if you ever asked about you know, how long it takes for it to be completely discharged, it's five time constants. So the time constants are very generic and very universal, which makes them nice to work with. All we got to do is figure them out by taking the resistor and the capacitor and multiplying their values to get the value for the time constant.